Hello, welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 20 of SQL Server. In this session, we'll understand what stored procedure return values are, the difference between stored procedure return values and output parameters, and finally, when to use output parameters over return values. In part 18 of this video series, we have seen the basics of stored procedures, and in part 19, we have seen how to create stored procedures with output parameters. If you haven't watched these two parts, I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with this session. Now, Let's first understand what return values are. Whenever you execute a stored procedure, it returns an integer status variable. Usually, a zero indicates success and a non-zero indicates failure. Let's understand what we mean by this practically. Okay, so we are in SQL Server Management Studio and in the Object Explorer, okay, if you open the Programmability folder, you should see Stored Procedures folder within which I have got a stored procedure SP get name by ID. We have created this stored procedure in the previous session. Okay, now if I want to execute this stored procedure, I can just right click on that and select Execute Stored Procedure. Now if you look at the name of the stored procedure, SP get name by ID. Okay, we want to get the name of the employee by providing his ID. So if I give, you know, ID of one, then I should get Sam back. Okay, so let's provide the value for ID, which is one. And when I click OK, look at this, the stored procedure gets executed. I get Sam's name back, which is the expected result. But if you look at this, we have a return value as well. And that's an integer. And it is zero here. So zero return value usually zero indicates success and a non-zero indicates failure. So from this we have understood that when we execute a stored procedure, we get an integer status variable back. Okay, And if that integer status variable is zero, then the stored procedure executed successfully and non-zero indicates a failure. All right, with that, now let's try and understand the difference between these return values and output parameters. In part 19 of this video series, we have seen a lot about output parameters. So in this session, we'll talk about the differences between output parameters and return values. Now, if you look at the procedure that I have written here, this procedure is called SP, get total count of employees. Okay, so in this table, I have got 10 employees, so I want to get the total count of these employees. So we are creating a stored procedure for that. SP get total count of employees, and we have an input parameter at total count. Okay, uh, sorry, an output parameter at total count. So this is a stored procedure with this we are creating with this output parameter. And what are we doing? We are initializing that output parameter with the count function. Okay. And let's create that practically. Okay, I want to get the total count of employees. So what we can do, we can create the stored procedure, create procedure SP, get total count. Okay, let's call it get total count one. And obviously to get that total count, to receive that total count, let's use an output parameter at total count and this is going to be of type integer and it's going to be output parameter as begin end. Now what we want to do, we want to select the total count of employees and initialize this output parameter with that count. So select at count is equal to count of ID from TBL employee table. OK, so let's execute the stored procedure. I mean, let's create this stored procedure. So when we execute, the stored procedure got su created successfully. So we have created the stored procedure now. Now, this is stored procedure with output parameter. And if we want to execute the stored procedure with output parameter, we have to first declare an integer variable and then pass this integer variable to the stored procedure with an output keyword. You have to tell this procedure that this is an output parameter. And then we select the value that is returned back into this output parameter. OK, so let's do that. Declare, let's call at total and integer. So we want to execute the stored procedure. So which is nothing but sp get total count. And 
we want to pass this output pair I mean this variable here and use the keyword out so that this variable will receive you know the value and finally what we want to do you can either print it or select it it's up to you what you want to do so let's print it here in this case okay so when we execute this we should get number 10 back okay which is the case so what we have done now we have created a stored procedure with an output parameter and which will receive the total number of employees and we have executed that stored procedure which will print the total number of employees okay now let's go ahead and do the same thing using return values okay so we are creating this procedure if you look at this this procedure is using the return value okay create procedure sp get total count of employees to as begin and if you look at this we have a return keyword here now and there is a bracket I mean there are a pair of brackets here and within that brackets we are saying select count of ID from employees meaning we are trying to count all the employees here okay so we get you know 10 employees so we, we are selecting number 10 and we are returning that 10 okay so this procedure what it's doing it's returning the total count of employees and this procedure it does essentially the same but in a different way using output parameters okay so let's create the second procedure so let's call this sp get total count to and we are not going to have an output parameter now instead what we are going to do we are just going to return the total count okay but you should have a bracket here okay so this pair of brackets ensures this statement get the statement gets executed first and whatever is the output that is returned back using this return uh, keyword so let's execute this procedure now so we have that procedure created now if you want to execute that stored procedure okay look at what you are doing here you are creating a variable of type integer and then when you execute this stored procedure using this execute keyword it returns a value back so we are taking that value and initializing this variable and finally what we are doing we are selecting it or you can print it okay so let's execute sp get total count 2 to execute that obviously we need a variable of type integer execute this one sp get total count 2 and then what we want to do when this stored procedure returns a value I want to initialize this variable and finally print that so obviously when I execute this we should get 10 okay so now if you look at this I am able to print the total number of employees in my organization you know using output parameters as well as using return values okay now let's look at an example where return status variables cannot be used but output parameters can be used okay alright so now let's say I want you to write a stored procedure which gives the name of an employee when I give it an ID so if I pass ID into the stored procedure it has to give the name of the employee to me back okay so obviously your I mean ID is an input parameter whereas name is an output parameter okay and what we are doing we are initializing this name output parameter with the name of the employee from employee table where ID is equal to whatever ID we are passing in okay and again this should be pretty straightforward we have spoken extensively about output parameters in part 19 of this video series so if you are new to output parameters please watch that video first okay so let's create the stored procedure sp get name by id 1 okay so create procedure let's call this sp get name by id 1 and this procedure needs to have two parameters you know when we pass in id we will get the name back so we need an integer parameter at id integer and we also need an output parameter which can receive the name of the employee back so at name since name is a st string it's nvar char of 20 and this is an output parameter so we need to use the output keyword as begin and what we want to do we want to select at name is equal to name 
from TBL employee table where ID is equal to at ID that we are passing in. Okay, so let's execute this stored procedure. Okay, so we got the stored procedure created now. Now let's execute this. To execute this stored procedure, obviously we need a variable to receive the name of the employee. So let's call this at name and this is going to be of type and where care of 20 and what we want to do is execute sp get name by id okay so if you want to execute this stored procedure you have to pass an id so let's say we will pass one and we want the name of the person back we know that we will receive the name into output parameters so we should have a variable which will receive that so i have created a variable for that pass that here and you have to use the out keyword otherwise this output parameter will not receive the value and finally what we want to do we want to say maybe name is equal to whatever this variable has okay so let's execute the stored procedure so when we execute that name is Sam okay so we are able to achieve you know we are able to retrieve the name of an employee by passing an ID ID is an input parameter whereas name is an output parameter so our stored procedure is capable of returning the name of an employee which is of type and where care let's try to do the same thing using output parameters so we have executed the stored procedure with output parameter now let's create a stored procedure which returns the name of the person given we provide it an ID okay the same kind of a procedure but using return values okay so if you look at this we are creating procedure we are having an ID parameter input parameter and look at this what it's doing it's selecting the name of the employee from TBL employee table where ID is equal to at ID and that has to be inside this bracket so whatever this query brings back that is being returned back okay so let's create the stored procedure so create procedure sp get name by ID let's call that two and we will have only an input parameter no output parameter as begin okay select instead of using the output parameter what we will do we will execute this one okay this query gets evaluated which selects the name of the employee for the provided ID and we finally return that back okay so let's create this stored procedure so we have the stored procedure created and obviously if you want to execute that you know since we are using return values you create a variable of type and where care and you will say okay that variable is equal to whatever is the result of the stored procedure okay so let's do that here okay so we declared this variable and what I want to say is at name is equal to execute that stored procedure it's not one it's going to be two because this is the procedure that we want to execute and let's pass one as the ID of the employee and let's execute this and see what happens okay so look at this conversion failed when converting the nvar care value SAM to data type integer now if you remember at the beginning of this video session we have spoken that whenever you execute a stored procedure it returns an integer status variable okay now this return value here when we execute this the return value of the stored procedure should always be an integer okay a value of zero indicates success and non-zero indicates failure okay but what did we do here we are trying to return an nvar care type though you know you are able to create this stored procedure successfully at runtime what's going to happen you know id is equal to one we are passing one here so for one the name is sam sam is the name of the employee so it tries to convert sam into an integer because the return value of a stored procedure is an integer okay you cannot convert sam word into an integer and it fails and that's why we get this error so keep in mind return values you can use return values only to return an integer 
okay and that too only one value let us say I have a scenario where I want to return the name and gender of an employee can I do that with return values no you cannot first of all they are string data types so you cannot do that even if they are integers let's say for example I want to return maybe the um, you know pin code and the age of a person both of them let's say they are integers can I do that with return values you cannot because a return value is only one value okay but can I do the same thing with output parameters absolutely you can return any number of values with output parameters and any data type whereas return values has to be integer and you can only return one value okay so those are the differences between so if you look at the differences between return values and output parameters return status value only integer data type whereas output parameters can be any data type because you have the flexibility of specifying the you know the the data type for output parameters look at this when you create an output parameter you specify the data type but you don't have that flexibility with return values so they are always integers whereas output parameters any data type return values only one value they can return only one value but output parameters you can return any number of values and usually in general at least I use return status value to convey success or failure of a stored procedure especially when we are dealing with nested stored procedures okay and if you really want to return values like name count age etc we should be using output parameters not return status variables values all right on this slide you can find resources for asp.net and c sharp interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day